Alright, what's going on everyone, and welcome to the series in which I introduce you to all of the most powerful competitive decks in the modern format. The goal here isn't to give you exact deck lists as those change constantly, but rather to give you just a brief overview of how the decks work so you can be prepared if you're new to the format. So today we're looking at Azorius Control, and bear in mind that control decks have to constantly adapt to metagame changes. For example, with Blue White Control, you might favor Dovin's Veto if the metagame is super aggressive and burn heavy, or you might see main deck Disdainful Strokes if combo or mid-range decks with big top end finishers are prevalent in the metagame. So just bear in mind that today, we're mostly just going to be covering the most popular tools used by most competitive blue white control decks in the metagame at the moment but i do encourage you to check metagame tracking websites for the most up-to-date deck list i'll leave some links to those in the description below so let's start with the popular counter spells of azorius control and that's counter spell archmage's charm and cryptic command the first of course is the classic og counter spell that's why we call them counter spells because this is the original counterspell. Archmage's Charm is a counterspell that can also draw cards or gain control of small things. And Cryptic Command is a counterspell that can bounce a permanent, tap all creatures that the opponent controls, or draw a card. And the best part here is that you get to choose two of them, so you can you can counter a spell and bounce a permanent. You can counter a spell, draw a card, whatever. Very useful. In terms of removal, the deck often plays Prismatic Ending, Solitude, and Supreme Verdict. The first exile is based on the colors of mana you spend to cast it, and this is relatively new. Before Modern Horizons, this was Path to Exile. Path to Exile has traditionally been like the, the, the premier white removal spell, though it's been replaced with Prismatic Ending recently. Solitude also exiles exiles a creature and you can cast it for free if you exile a white card and then supreme verdict four mana board sweeper can't be countered pretty straightforward chalice of the void is also very popular in azorius control decks at the moment um chalice gets counters when you cast it and then whenever a player plays a spell with the same mana value as the counters it gets countered so if it has two counters every single two mana spell gets countered you basically lock people out of playing cards of a specific mana value and that's relevant because plenty of decks in modern have specific cards they need to win you know you can shut down that shadow um you can shut down burn all kinds of stuff like that with chalice of the void it's played in many control and lockdown decks also recently the deck has been playing memory deluge a um, pretty cool card it's in standard at the moment you look at the top x cards and you get to pick two of them and put them into your hand and x is equal to the mana spent to cast it so basically when you cast it four mana look at the top four get two cards but then it has flashback for seven so in the late game you pay seven you look at the top seven cards and you get two of them so it's already card advantage but then it has flashback and it's super relevant in the late game looking at seven cards and picking two of them and the best part is it's an instant so you can cast it at the end of your opponent's turn you can hold up your counter spells if your opponent doesn't do anything you can dump seven mana into it and you know basically find whatever seven cards is a lot so very relevant in the late game but of course a control deck isn't a control deck without solid planeswalkers and azorius control gets the fury and the other to Fury. Um, Little Tefiri basically forces your opponent to play as stupidly as possible, sort of. Um, it doesn't allow your opponent to cast spells at instant speed. They have to cast everything at sorcery speed, and this makes it so much easier to play a control game because you don't have to worry about combat tricks. You don't have to worry about protection spells. If you're in a control matchup, it neutralizes your opponent's counter spells because they, they can't respond because they can't play at instant speed. Um, you can also minus three to bounce things every few turns and then big to fury his plus one allows you to draw a card and untap two lands at end of turn so of course drawing cards amazing and blue control but untapping the lands ensures that you have lands untapped for counter spells so a very good controlling planeswalker he can also tuck non-land permanents into the opponent's library and his ultimate basically gives you a game ending emblem albeit of course a very slow slow and grueling game ending emblem but if you get that emblem game's over it just might take many many turns because of course it's a grindy azorius control planeswalker so the, the emblem can't just win right away 
It's got to be slow, grueling, and painful. And it is. The deck also sometimes plays Jace the Mind Sculptor and recently has started playing the Wandering Emperor. So these are less popular, like half the decks play them and only one copy of either. You know, you'll, you'll see a Jace every once in a while. You'll see a Wandering Emperor every once in a while. But um, basically Jace is the, is the classic blue Planeswalker. In fact, it was banned at one point. His plus two lets you look at the top card of either player's library and put it to the bottom if you want. So you can use this to filter the top of your deck if you want, or you can look at the top of the opponent's deck if you've stabilized and deny them the ability to draw cards, like draw key pieces. Like if they have a combo piece that they're looking for, you, if you see it, you can just tuck it to the bottom. Um, The zero ability is a brainstorm, classic filter spell, classic magic card, and you get it for free basically every turn. And then minus one bounces a creature, fantastic. And the minus 12 is largely irrelevant, but uh, the Wandering Ripper on the other hand, it's cool, but bear in mind, uh, this is relatively new, we don't know if it's gonna stick, but it's being played now, I'm, I'm recording this like a month after Kamigawa came out, and... A lot of blue eye controllers are playing this at the moment, but uh, why it's so cool is it has flash. It's a planeswalker with flash, and the minus two exiles the tapped creature. So basically, you let your opponent attack, then you flash this in minus two immediately to exile an attacking creature. So that's pretty great. And eventually, it can make tokens, and then those tokens can soak up counters. So it's not a bad planeswalker. It's really just a removal spell. It's four mana, jam a planeswalker in play, exile an attacker, and then maybe it becomes relevant later in the game. The deck also free frequently plays Shark Typhoon. The most important thing here is the cycling ability. When you cycle it, you create an XX Flying Shark token. And since you can cycle at instant speed, this sort of functions as a pseudo removal spell. Basically, you pay a bunch of mana in the late game for a massive shark token at instant speed when your opponent is attacking and it's a surprise blocker. You know, you jam it down. Here's a blocker you weren't expecting and you draw a card because cycling, you draw a card when you cycle. So, you know, put a big blocker in play, kill a creature, kill an attacker, draw a card, and now you have a big threat. So that's the main purpose of this. Although, of course, you can always cast it. If you cast it, you start producing shark tokens every time you cast spells. So both modes are perfectly fine. It's a finisher regardless. The deck also has win conditions in the mana base with Celestial Colonnade and Hall of the Storm Giants. Both of these animate into large creatures. The first is a 4-4 with Flying and Vigilance, and the second is a 7-7 with Ward. So these are just win conditions in the mana base, right? You can win the game with your lands once you've, you know, taken control of the game, basically. So there you go. Uh, also in the mana base, Castle Vantress, relevant. It's a land, it can come into play untapped if you control an island, and then you get to scry. Scry 2, do that at the end of your opponent's turn with your excess mana, and being able to scry 2 every turn at the end of your opponent's turn is very powerful in a control deck once you get into the late game. And that's really the foundation of blue-white control. There are still plenty of other spells that I can play because, like I mentioned, Control decks are always adapting with the metagame, so they tend to shift and change as the metagame does. But Azorius Control does exactly what you would expect. It counters spells, it eliminates threats, it sweeps the board, and then it stabilizes with Planeswalkers that generate value and kind of lock down the game. You probably already knew that before clicking the video, but now you know for sure, I guess. But anyway, check the description for links to metagame pages for up-to-date deck lists. And if you like this video, I have an entire playlist dedicated to these modern deck guides, and you can find a link to that in the description as well. So definitely check that out if you're interested. But in the meantime, thanks for watching. I hope this was useful, and I will see you in the next one. Thank <laughs> you.